there's room to slide it in there. But I also had to move this because I had it kind of coming down here and it was right in the way. So I, I undid that down here and kind of moved it back. Uh, the other thing that comes with the kit, which is really nice, is a change for the breather. The stock 850 breather comes out right on the back here, which you, you can't see, but I'm, I'm using a different breather that is a reed valve type from the sump. So I've got my breather hose routed out of the way, and this would be used to route that because the stock breather comes out here and, and kind of makes a nice curve, which would be right in the way of the starter. And so that's not going to work. So the, the kit comes with what you'd need to do to, to change that. Very nice. Now I've laid the starter in place. It's definitely a snug fit with everything on there. Um, I ended up kind of pulling this out of the way and going in behind there because trying to come in this way, just you don't have room, but it fits. I put this down there because I haven't bolted it in place yet and I just kind of wanted to protect it from the rest of the engine and the cradle. Okay, this shows the starter fully in place and the next step is to take this cover, put it in place, there's some pins that locate it and then you've got these allen bolts to screw into that so I'll do that in a second. The instructions call for a small amount of medium strength or typically blue Loctite to be in, used on the threads for these bolts. So you can see I've, I've put a little bit on there. I've already done the other one. I did use Loctite on that and I'll just screw this home as well. So this is not unusual with this kind of a, an install. Uh, I made a mistake in that I had the wire, which I should have put down here so that it'd be close to in place and running underneath the starter motor. It was still coming out over there on the other side, so it's kind of a tight fit. I ended up having to loosen this back up so I could get that back underneath there. Um, you know, not a big deal. The Loctite was has not set up yet, so I've already got it loosened up, the wire in place, and uh, everything ready to go. So that wire goes there. Um, this one is important because normally when you have it hooked up to the battery, it's got 12 volts on it all the time. So don't hook it up to the, the other end up to the battery while you're doing this because you've got 12 volts floating around here and you're going to arc something out. So uh, just a word of caution there. I'm also not loving where this is, so I will have to kind of tweak the routing of this here uh, when all is said and done as well. I'm going to go ahead and, and hook this end, which is not live, up to the starter now. Okay, that shows the uh, wire that actually gets, uh, that starts the starter motor and also the 12 volt uh, power supply line to, to that all secured. So that is all done. I got my new stator uh, in the mail today, so I was able to put that on and got the wire coming out here and into that grommet. I, I kind of think this grommet is the hardest part of the whole install. Uh, I, I think grommets are really a pain. This is how I do the spacing for the stators. So put that on. It's usually a tight, it's usually pretty tight, but when you pull it out, you know you've got clearance. Um, I've already tightened these down. These get a little bit of blue Loctite on them as well. Um, if you don't uh, use that method where you, you try and put it on and run a feeler gauge around there, you might need to lock them down, spin the engine over, and and then lock the blue lock tight them one at a time, which is what is described in the instructions. Kind of at the last stage for this, the final adjustment is to adjust these two so that this does not freewheel while the engine is running. Right now they're both slacked off 
and there's a procedure for adjusting them by starting the engine, letting it run um, kind of at an idle or just above idle, and this will be spinning. And then you tighten this down until the little detente on the back side of this fits into these holes and actually stops it. And then you find that place where it stops it, back it off a full turn, and then you adjust this one the same way. When you've got this one adjusted so that it stops it, then you put this back where it was, and you've got two detentes to keep this from spinning. Then you do a final test where you bring the RPMs up to about 2,500 RPM and just verify that it's not spinning still, that it's, it's still good. If it is does start to kind of start creeping, then you turn both of these in quarter of a turn at a time until it stops. So I'm going to go ahead and, and start it up right now. Um, yes, there's a little gas leak here. This bike hasn't really been run for about six months, so uh, I need to pull the carbs off, but uh, I'm going to try and get this done before I do that. So let's go ahead and key on. Ignition. Try that again. Right again. I think that's good. I'm gonna go ahead and, and lock those down and then put the cover on and I think I will call this installation complete. One last thing. One of the things that uh, Matt includes in the kit is pretty much everything you might possibly need. So there invariably are some things that you may not end up using. I think I already talked about this. This would be a, a change to routing the breather so that it doesn't hit the starter motor. Uh, this is the uh, awesome little starter switch which I, I've chosen not to use as well. These are a couple of shims that could be put behind the clutch basket in case you needed to bring it out to line it up with the drive. I did not need those um, hose for the breather to attach to the oil tank. But one last thing is another little um, piece for the for setting the timing if you need to. Notice that, that this one that Matt has sent is flat, and if you look in there, you'll see that the stuck Norton one is dished and it, it extends in further. So I think the notes said something about some machines had an issue with that where, where uh, the location of the rotor is a little different. It's a little closer to that. So he's provided another one in case it, it, it makes contact. Mine does not, I just tested it with putting this back up. So I am not gonna do that at this point. But uh, basically this is some of the stuff, uh, amazing stuff if you need to use these. These are, these are awesome, but I, I, I'm a big fan of uh, Lucas Bullet Connections, so um, I did not elect to use those either. But uh, I think it's pretty much ready to go, so. 
better view of that. There it is. It's beautiful.